Hello there. My name is George Hurst. I'm here with my friend Michael today, and uh, he's made a deal with me that if I would teach him some leather craft, he would teach you. So in this program, Michael's going to teach you how to do a basic project that you'll really enjoy. We wanted to make a useful leather project that was simple, uh, that a beginner could do with basic tools. So what we're going to do today is a valet tray. I've also heard them called catch-alls, but ultimately something that you can kind of throw your keys in when you get home. Uh, pretty simple to make and you don't really need a pattern. Um, they can be made pretty much any size, but I'm going to make a smaller one, so I'm going to make mine 8x8. Eight eight. So what we need to do to start out is we need to go ahead and um, trace on the line with our pencil to make sure we have a big enough piece. Um, this metal ruler right here is actually has an 8 inch side, so that's pretty handy for me. So I'm going to go ahead and make that mark there. And while this is squared up here, I'm also going to go ahead and make this one across there. All right, so we now have our square piece of leather drawn out, and we're going to go ahead and start cutting it. Now for this, I'm just going to use a uh, standard utility knife, and I'm going to square that up. And it's good to have a metal edge ruler here so that you can um, have a cutting line. So we're going to go ahead and cut along that line. Now when you do this, put some downward pressure on that metal ruler. They have a little bit of a tendency to slip. So you want to make sure that um, you stay on that line while cutting, but also make sure that you keep your fingers clear so you don't end up with any gnarly scars. So now you have your square piece of leather. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to case the leather. We're going to use a sponge and just some regular water, and we're going to go ahead and Soak it pretty well. Um, we're going to be wet molding this here in a little bit, so we want to make sure that we get the water to saturate all the way through the leather. We're going to go ahead and do both sides. And uh, a little much water there, but it's important to get uh, the water to penetrate at least halfway through the wet leather um, so that it has a, a good surface. Now the other thing that we're going to go ahead and do while it's wet is we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark where we want the holes to go that are going to ultimately pinch these corners together. Now for mine, I'm going to use Chicago screws, so I'm going to use a uh, 3 16 uh, hole punch. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to look at roughly where I want those holes to be up here in the corners. Well, the farther down I go, the more of an angle that this valet is going to have. So I'm going to go pretty close to the corner, not too close for it'll tear, but I'm going to go right about there. I'm going to go ahead and make my punch. Now while I have a pencil here, I'm going to go ahead and fold that in half. And while that's folded in half, I'm going to make sure I get a good edge there. I'm going to find out where that hole comes out. So I'm going to kind of fold that down, and I can see that I'm going to go ahead and put that other corresponding hole right there. And kind of line that up a little bit, make sure that it's somewhat symmetrical. Go ahead and put your next hole. Now, you could go ahead and proceed to fold this together and you could go ahead and make the valet tray right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little bit of tooling here in the middle to give it a little bit uh, more personal design. Well, if you're planning on tooling, you want to wait for the leather to kind of return to its original color. Um, the first few projects I did, I went ahead and started tooling while it was uh, pretty damp and my design turned out a little mush mushy and so you find the more you do, the moisture content actually is really important. Um, in doing so. So you can trace a pattern on, or what I'm going to use today is a craft aid. Um, these are really handy. It's a, a piece of plastic that on one side has kind of a raised ridge. And when you put that on there, you go ahead, and I'm going to use the Celtic knot pattern. Put that down centered. 
And then you use a uh, hard surface like a modeling spoon and you just kind of run it against the pattern. And what that'll do is that'll actually leave an impression of the design that you can then cut with your swivel knife. Really handy, these are great for beginners. There's some really uh, interesting designs available. So you can see there, there's an impression of what it is that I'm going to cut. So what I'm gonna use is a regular swivel knife, just the regular one that comes in most of the kits. Now, when you use it, you wanna go ahead and strop it. I'm gonna use some Jeweler's Rouge and rub it on this piece of leather. And when I strop the knife, I'm gonna hold it at the angle of the blade and I'm gonna pull backwards and then lift up at the end. Something you wanna avoid doing is you wanna avoid rolling it when you get to the edge because what that's gonna do is that it's going to ruin your cutting surface. So go ahead and strop this on each side about equally. Now, stropping is important because what it does is it cleans the blade, it polishes the blade. So when you're cutting into leather, sometimes the minerals that are used in tanning um, will kind of gunk up the blade a little bit and cause some friction. So that can uh, cause it to drag. So when you polish the blade, it helps it cut cleanly. So you want to do that every now and then while you're doing your project. Um, so a few things that are important. You always want to pull towards yourself when you're cutting. And also you always want to cut away from other lines to make sure that you don't overcut into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start here and feel free to move the leather around as much as you'd like. Now it's important to hold it correctly. You want to hold your finger here on the yolk and make sure that it's not all the way down here, but kind of right there on the knuckle. So with a Celtic design, you know, it's a little difficult to uh, pull away from the line because every line is intersecting. Um, but do what you can and don't want to cut into the next line either. You want to stop just before it when possible. Now, when you pull these, when you go around curves, you want to use the barrel of the knife to turn it rather than turning your hand. Um, it feels a little awkward at first, however, it will help um, when you get the hang of it. It'll help you get some cleaner lines. The other thing is you want these cuts to go about half the depth of the leather. Um, not only will this kind of help give you some clean lines, however, it'll also help in the next step when you're doing your beveling. Um, there's a lot of people who they'll kind of get stuck in beveling and have a difficult time and it's because they don't have a deep enough channel that created with their swivel knife. I've cut out this center part. Now the other thing that I want to do is trace this circle around the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it towards myself almost like I'm cutting a straight line. Don't be afraid to make stops and turn the leather again to make sure that you can follow that curve. Just move the leather as much as you need to during any of these steps. I'm going to use a, uh, the standard beveler that comes with the kit. It's the flat beveler. Um, pretty standard piece and what we're going to do is we're actually going to bevel to the outside of the design. Beveling is a step in that you take to kind of give a 3D effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set it into that groove that we made with the swivel knife and we're going to make small steps as we go and run it along that line. Now I like to put my pinky near the base because it helps it stay in line, but you do want to make sure that you have the back of the tool facing you so you can see what it's doing and that you let it kind of spring up a little bit between each hit, just moving very small amounts each time. Now you can see that this leather is perfect because there's getting a nice brown burnish. So it's a little bit darker brown where we're doing our tooling. And that's exactly the moisture content level that you want. Now you'll also notice that it moves pretty smoothly in that swivel knife channel because we got nice deep cuts earlier when we were doing our swivel knife cutting. Make sure you're keeping it straight up and down. If you get a little bit of an angle, you'll start to get the face of the tool and the design and 
it's uh, not quite what you want. Now that I'm done beveling the inside, I'm going to bevel the outside. Now what we want to keep in mind is what do we want to seem like um, is coming to the foreground. So if I was going to do backgrounding in here, I would probably bevel to this side of the line. But I think for this design, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with swivel knife cut and beveling. So I'm going to go to the outside. Now when I do this, I'm going to hold down the piece of leather with my hand to keep it from moving. And I'm going to go ahead and start tapping away. Now at this point, we're still getting that nice brown color. However, it may feel like it's dragging a little bit and there may be the temptation to re-wet it, but you're getting the right color. Just uh, keep going through. And you may feel a little resistance because you're going slightly along the line, but this is exactly where you want it to be at this point. And there we are. Now that we have our tooling done, we could go ahead and dye it if that's the, what we wanted to do. However, I'm going to do something a little different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dampen the leather, and then I'm going to go ahead and attach the Chicago screws and form it to what we want it to ultimately look like. The reason I'm going to do this is that whenever we fold it, there's going to be a few wrinkles that happen here in the edges where the leather bunches up a bit. And if we're going to have that anyway, I much rather use an antique gel to capture that detail and give it a little bit of a rustic look. So we're going to resaturate the leather here. Anytime you wet the leather, you want to wet it evenly. That way you don't leave any water marks. So I'll go ahead and do this side as well. Now since we did these a little closer to the edge, they're going to be a little bit more difficult to uh, work the Chicago screw through. So I'm going to go ahead and use something to expand them a little bit. You could use the original punch you used, but uh, it'll make a little easier to kind of wrestle those in if they're expanded slightly. So we're going to go ahead and pinch it and then put one side through and then work the other one through. And then use the other side of the screw. Go ahead and screw that in. And we have the basic shape. Now while it's wet, you can still go ahead and you can start to, to mold this and fold these corners down to give them a little bit of an edge. And whenever this dries, it'll keep whatever shape it is that you put it in now. So let's go ahead and get it to roughly the way we want to do it. And there we have that. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry in that shape. And when it dries, it'll retain that so when we dye it, um, we can go ahead and reattach it and we can be more or less finished. We've let our project dry overnight and as you can see with the screws being held in place, it's actually retained its form. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these screws and now we're going to dye it. There's several different products that you can use to dye this. You can either use a dye, which will make it all the same color, but what I'm going to use is uh, antique gel. Now what antique gel will do is it brings out some of the natural character of the leather, but it also gets down in the tooling impression so you can really uh, see all of the different tooling marks. Now these dyes are made to color hide, which includes yours, so make sure you wear gloves. You'll be happy that you did and it'll save you some questions from coworkers later. So for the gel antique, you can either use a damp sponge or some sheep's wool. I'm going to use some sheep's wool. And what you do is you uh, will kind of glob that on there a little bit, pretty liberally. And then you just go ahead and start smearing it on. Now you do want to make sure it's important you get down in all of the tooling impressions. Um, but other than that, use as much as you need to. 
We'll go ahead and we'll kind of part these a little bit to make sure that we can get down in there. And using a circular motion helps prevent getting streaks. And get all the way all over it on the sides, on the edge here. You want pretty thorough coverage of anywhere that you see the natural color of the leather here. And what this antique will do is it will get down on all of those marks and it'll give you a, a slight variation in the color where there's either the wrinkles from where it's held together or um, you know some of the natural character of the piece of leather and all of our tooling marks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the excess with just a regular paper towel. And we're going to start buffing that out. Make sure that we have even coverage on it, but that it's not left in small pools anywhere. Now after I've done this once, I'm going to get another paper towel and I'm going to just lightly touch it to my damp sponge. Um, don't need too much moisture, but just a little bit. And we're going to go over that again to make sure that we can get all of that excess off so we have a good rich color that's fairly consistent. So we have it all in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that antique gel and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the back. Now if for some reason you did this out of sequence and you uh, decided to dye it before you went ahead and formed it, you wouldn't want to dye the back at that point because you'd need to leave um, somewhere in the leather that moisture could still enter the leather. And so this seals those pores a little bit so it'll be hard to re-wet. However, since we did form it before, um, it will it'll retain its shape now. So we're almost done here. Now we are going to wipe down the back a little bit, but we don't have to worry quite as much about it just because it is a, a, a the fleshier side of the leather. It's a little rough, but also just because it's not necessarily the focal point. But we do want to make sure that we clean off any excess uh, the gel antique when we're done here. And there you have it. Our valet tray is done. We can let it dry. And uh, once it dries, you can put the screws back in. Or actually, once it's since it's dried with the wet molding, it'll keep this shape. So it's kind of personal choice. Uh, you could put something a little more decorative in those holes if you decided to do so. But at the end of the day, it's up to you how you want to do your design. But it's pretty well done. So there you have it. You can throw your keys in it. You can throw your wallet in it. Some of them put on the nightstand. They make simple, great, easy gifts. So get out there and try it. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, there are a lot of variations of things that you can do on this project. For instance, this one, I left natural tan, vegetable tan color, but I did slick the edges. Um, for this one, we ended up putting the screw a little bit higher up and let it dry that way, so it created more of a, a bowl. It has higher edges. So a lot of different things that you can do with this project. Um, comment in the section below and let me know how you do yours. Another thing to note is we recently started a project with a website called Amara. Um, Amara offers translation services, so we're working on putting Leathercraft videos in every language imaginable. So if visit Amara, A-M-A-R-A, dot org, backslash teams, backslash Tandy Leather, and volunteer and help us with our translation project to help develop better Leathercraft resources for your community. See you next time. Mm -hmm.